As the balloon capital of the world, the home of legendary pilots, and the host of the largest hot air ballooning event in the world, it's only fitting that Albuquerque houses one of the most comprehensive collections of ballooning history and memorabilia in the world. Welcome to the Anderson Abruzzo Albuquerque International Balloon Museum. I'm Nan Masland, museum manager. The museum was founded in 2005, 15 years ago, in honor of Ben Abruzzo and Maxie Anderson, two ballooning legends who put Albuquerque on the map. Behind these doors is the greatest collection of ballooning memorabilia, history, and culture that you'll find anywhere. Uplifting spirits and telling tales of adventures is what we do best here at the Balloon Museum. We have an extensive collection of ballooning memorabilia and artifacts, and we pull the best from that collection to show you at the Balloon Museum. Not only do we have pieces from our collection, but we also have hands-on interactives that help people understand the world of ballooning firsthand. Albuquerque is home to a number of record-setting balloonists, the most recent being Troy Bradley, holder of more than 60 world ballooning records. But it all started with Maxie Anderson, Ben Abruzzo, and Larry Newman, who became the first pilots to cross the Atlantic by hot air balloon in August of 1978 in the Double Eagle II. Probably the biggest one that really intrigued me with the record setting was uh, the trio from Albuquerque, uh, uh, Ben Abruzzo, Maxie Anderson, and Larry Newman with the Double Eagle II. And that flight just uh, always intrigued me, and, um, and I knew that that was something that I would love to be able to do at some point. Balloonists have always been my heroes. Um, you know, I was, I, was, uh, I was probably that weird kid at school, not uh, the, the typical one. You know, I wasn't uh, at all the football games or baseball games, and uh, that wasn't really my, uh, my area. It was always about ballooning. And um, so instead of collecting baseball cards, you know, I was collecting pins from, uh, from my heroes, uh, you know, uh, or patches of balloon flights. And that's always who I looked up to. Um, I found their, their feats to be remarkable. I found the amount of planning that it took and the, um, the bravery actually to, you know, set off on some of these type of things uh, remarkable. And so that was something that I always, uh, hoped I could emulate at some point and uh, have been very fortunate to do it many, many times. Although both Abruzzo and Anderson would die tragically, Anderson in a balloon accident, Abruzzo in a light plane crash, their heroics would live on in the museum. So I knew uh, Maxie Anderson and Ben Abruzzo, who were both remarkable, charismatic, but very different individuals. And after Maxie was killed in 1983, which was, you know, very difficult for all of us, about a year later, I was talking to Patty Anderson and some members of the Anderson family, and they were, were just in the process of conceiving this museum. They wanted to start this museum project to honor Maxie. And Ben Abruzzo, who was still alive then, but the Abruzzo family uh, was very supportive of, of the project. And then um, after Ben and his wife Pat were killed in 1985, uh, it became, it, it evolved into the um, Anderson Abruzzo International Balloon, Albuquerque International Balloon Museum. In 2002, I was approached to uh, see if I would be interested in serving on the Board of Trustees. So I was appointed in 2003 and wound up being on the board for 11 years. That was during the very exciting period when the Balloon Museum was under construction and then was open to the public and had a lot of struggles, especially financial struggles in those very early years. Um, and it's been very gratifying to see it grow into what it's become today. Even then, it was a very exciting concept and a worthy way to recognize the achievements of these two really remarkable guys from Albuquerque who are just fun-loving, adventurous guys who went on to change um, aviation history. In addition to celebrating the exploits of intrepid balloon pilots, the museum and its annex have become home to more than 30,000 objects related to ballooning and ballooning history. 
Items range from giant gondolas to tiny balloon pins, from rare letters penned by early balloonists to the official weather report for the inaugural balloon fiesta in 1972, submitted by Dr. George Fishback. Our collection is really far-ranging, um, both geographically and temporally. Uh, we have artifacts from countries that, frankly, I didn't even know about. Our overall collection is actually made up of smaller collections which have come to the museum. Our earliest collection we received was from the Sokup and Thomas collection. Um, Jacques Sokup and Kirk Thomas had a private museum, and when they closed their museum, they came to the Balloon Museum. So. Uh, they were very avid collectors. They mostly collected the older material that is in our holdings. We also received quite a bit of material from the Anderson family and the Cruza family. Their materials tended to be more related to the epic flights of the Andersons and ben Benabruzzo and Maxie Anderson. Along the way, we've um, received other materials from local people. Um, it's funny how when people downsize their house, they all of a sudden want to get rid of their balloon and stuff because they don't have space for it anymore. Really, I think you could say that we have one of the better type collections of, of baskets. We have gondolas that are used in sport ballooning, and we also have balloons that were used for um, in championships. Uh, we have gondolas that were used for epic flights, for example, hanging in, in the museum. We have the Zanuzi, which was one of the early Atlantic crossing um, attempts. Uh, we have the Double Eagle Five, which is a huge gondola. It's, you know, probably eight feet across and 10 feet tall and 20 feet long, and that was used for the first uh, crossing in a gas balloon of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and then we have these funny little gondolas, which are basically just a, a structure with no, with nothing around them. There's no, no rattan, there's no plastic, there's no fabric, nothing. We have a lot of manuscript documents, uh, some quite early, in fact, one of our earlier earliest pieces in the collection is from 1783, and it's a four-page letter that was written by a gentleman who was at the very first test flight with living beings, a balloon that took off with a duck, a sheep, and a rooster. And um, when you're a museum curator, you're not supposed to have a favorite child but that's my favorite child in, in the museum because uh, the fourth page of this letter just has the most beautiful wash uh, painting of the balloon and the little basket. And if you look really close, you can see the, the sheep and the duck peering out of the basket. We have quite a few letters from a man named Nadar. Nadar, in fact, was the only person who ever took Jules Verne up in, uh, in a balloon. And it's said that uh, Verne's character named Arden was actually fashioned after Nadar, and the name is kind of playing off of Nadar's name. One of the nice things about our collection and what we do for researchers is that anyone could call and come and use our collection. Lots, lots of books have sprung, sprung from our collection and from our holdings and our expertise. And it's, it's really pretty cool that people think that you know we're the go-to guys for, uh, for fact checking. Although we would like for people to be able to see as much as possible from our collection, it's nearly impossible to have it all out. We're working at 
doing a, an electronic catalog of our collection. And one of the reasons that we purchased the cataloging system that we did is that it has a function called the e-museum. And so we can put items, we can put information about the items and photographs of many of our artifacts. And actually that gives us a much broader reach. Uh, people all over the world can come to us on the internet and see our collections. So. Meanwhile, back at the museum, staff is gearing up for its next major exhibition. 2022 will mark the year of the 50th Balloon Fiesta. And here at the Balloon Museum, we will have an exhibition to celebrate. This will be an opportunity for visitors to experience Balloon Fiesta when Balloon Fiesta isn't happening. One of the elements in the exhibition is a half dome theater where you can have an immersive experience of a balloon glow, a flight, and a mass ascension. In the exhibition, there will be a digital interactive timeline that spans 50 years of balloon fiesta history. But there's no need to wait for the 50th. We could all use a little lift, and there's no better place for that than the Balloon Museum. Albuquerque is a ballooning capital of the world, and people travel from all over to come experience ballooning here in New Mexico, and specifically in Albuquerque. It's a very unique part of our culture that we love sharing with others. Here at the Balloon Museum, you can learn about it all. The science, the technology, and the art and culture of ballooning, both hot air and gas ballooning. We're sad to be missing the Balloon Fiesta this year. It's something we look forward to all year long, but we invite you to come here to the Balloon Museum and experience the next best thing.